All right, gang, what's up? It's Wes. And I have been getting a lot of awesome uh, feedback and talking with people on Discord and social media and direct messages and stuff and, and just giving some overall general advice. However, there is one question that comes up more often than not, and it's should I be tailoring my portfolio for a specific type of job if I want a job in a specific industry? It sounds redundant but uh, basically what it is like I'm a fantasy illustrator I also do science fiction and stuff but basically it would be if I wanted to get hired by let's say Wizards of the Coast should I make my portfolio primarily stuff that I would think would fit with like Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering or should I be more of a generalist that way no matter who looks at my stuff uh, they can get a sense of what I'm about or or what have you so this is going to cover that of should you target, should you really kind of beeline and make your portfolio what you should get hired for? And the answer might be kind of obvious, but there's also another piece of this puzzle that I would like to discuss, something that's been on my mind lately. And by doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do about a two hour, I did kind of a color sketch thing of an orc, ranger, assassin, archer, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of computer role-playing games, so a lot of like Neverwinter Nights. I know I talked about that on a previous uh, episode. I think the Going Further Faster video, I talk about Neverwinter Nights Diamond Edition. But I've also been playing this kind of a little janky, but it's really fun, uh, Demon Stone. Forgotten Realms Demon Stone, the D&D &D fantasy kind of dirty, rugged action, you know, beat-em-up game. It's it's fun. Um, not the best game I've ever played, but hey, it's it's still fun. So uh, I wanted to do something kind of in that style, kind of the brown, gray, grungy, but then add a little bit more life to it and uh, basically just kind of sketch out something, paint it for you guys, and something that I like the feel of. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about our topic of targeting your portfolio for a specific job or should you just kind of go with the flow and see what happens but without further ado let's get started all right so let's get cozy let's get comfy we'll we'll talk about this sorry if you hear a little fizz in the background i just opened up a root beer and it's been a while since I've had a root beer. This thing's fizzy, man. There's fizz everywhere. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's talk about our topic, which is going to be, um, yeah, setting up your portfolio in a way that gets you a specific job. Now, this is something that uh, it seems very obvious whenever you think of it because here's here's a spoiler alert if you want to save some time the answer is yes if you want a specific job if you want to get work on magic the gathering make 30 things that look as good if not better than something in magic the gathering send it to the art director and your chances will go up exponentially to get that job um it's not necessarily rocket science but i do understand the feeling of being trapped within a certain style or maybe something that doesn't quite fit what your what your niche is kind of what you're going after and that's actually something that's been on my mind too and i am glad to say and it's funny because as you're seeing right here the the sketch phase of this did not go well you guys know my battle with sketching and drawing and all that stuff this drawing doesn't look great but it gave me the information i needed to push this to final and that's really, I, I have to make peace with that. I can always get better at drawing, but as of right now, drawing is just a way to map out what I need mentally to get to the next step of painting. So anyway, uh, should you target a certain client or a certain job? Uh, overall, the answer is yes, simply because by the very nature of you trying to emulate the style of the job that you want. So if you're making card art, or you're making like, if you wanna work in like tabletop role playing games and you wanna do that type, or like book covers, for instance. Like this one right here, um, what we're seeing, it's something that I got uh, 
I really like Todd Lockwood. Todd Lockwood is a traditional artist and he's been an artist in the fantasy industry for decades. He's done, he's probably the most famous for his Legend of Dritz novel covers. And I just love his storytelling. And there's a certain thing that I wanted to capture with that. I wanted to capture some sort of storytelling, maybe an epic moment or something like that in this one. It was very inspired by Todd's work. And that kind of ties into what this overall point is. I promise it's, I'm going to try to stay targeted up front, and then it's going to get a little heady, a little more headspace, artsy-fartsy stuff near the end. But bear with me, because I hope you'll find some advice sprinkled throughout that could be useful for you. So yes, if you do want to get a job in D&D, make D&D art. Make it. Go ahead and do fan art of it. Uh, get your favorite character. What would your take on a character or a storyline be? Go ahead and make that and put that in your portfolio. Do five or six of those and then reach out. Reach out to the art director. Reach out to a person that's in that industry. Maybe they might have connections. And, you know, don't, don't like knock on their door every 20 minutes or anything. But put in your best work. Put your best foot forward. Uh, introduce yourself. Have confidence. And, you know, good things are going to happen. What also is going to happen is, let's say you don't reach the exact goal that you want, your work will improve and you're going to get hired for other stuff too. So my commission uh, schedule has been nuts lately. And I do think part of that is I'm pushing more towards a high fantasy kind of grungy or it's weird I, I like the high fantasy motifs but I love grungy art I love textured heavy brush stroke that's the stuff I dig I really like it um but apparently a lot of other people really like that too because I'm getting more commissions now than I ever have before and that's where that dichotomy of tailoring your portfolio comes into play I would say have a goal have a goal client, have a dream client that you would love to work with. Like for mine, I would love to work on something for Lord of the Rings. Something officially licensed by the Tolkien estate. Lord of the Rings, whether it's, I know they had the, uh, like, Journey, uh, Journeys to Middle-Earth or Journeys of Middle-Earth, that board game that's out now that's really popular. Um, you know, of course, there's the Lord of the Rings Amazon show. There's that type of stuff that's happening, but there's also the card game, the living card game that came out years and years ago. I want to say it's like over 10 years old now, but that type of stuff, I, I, I love it. Anything with the official Lord of the Rings branding, like Lord of the Rings Online, there's just so much, and I love that feel, and I love that vibe, and I mean, my daughter's middle name is Shire, for God's sake. So, I'm a big, big fan, right? So, I, it would be a dream gig. Now, should I do... 40 paintings of just Lord of the Rings stuff in hopes to get hired? My, my logical brain says yes. My artistic brain says no. <laughs> and that's where we're going to start veering a little bit. Um, I understand the advice, and I fully believe the advice. If you want to get uh, like a card art in the card game industry, make card art. Make art that you would see on a card. And then be honest with yourself. Is this good enough to be on a card? Yes or no? Uh, once that answer is yes and you're realistic with yourself, it may not be as good as maybe your heroes in the field. But if it's good enough that you think you can get some gigs, start throwing your name out there. Now, like I said before, because you're going to be doing that, you're going to be improving a lot of things. Card art needs good composition. It needs good contrast. It needs high value. It needs um, uh, understanding of shape language. So there's artistic fundamentals that you'll need to get good at in order to make, in my opinion, solid card art. And your art's just going to improve because of it. So on your destination, or heading to your destination, you're going to get better. And then your, your other avenues will open for you. But that's still going in service of getting a specific type of job, whether it's a whether it's a specific client, such as hey, yeah, Wizards of the Coast or uh, you know Guildhouse Games for Varia, or an industry. Doesn't matter where I work. I want to work in tabletop role playing game books. That's all I want to do. Uh, I, I think that might be a slightly healthier 
way to go about it because you're not going to shut yourself off to other instances of things that can help you grow artistically or professionally. And there, there is a saying that, you know, whenever you're young and hungry and coming up and, you know, or if you're starting a new type of job or career, always say yes. You don't really want to say no up front because saying yes, you're going to get overwhelmed, sure, but you're going to kind of see the proof in the pudding. You're going to see what the job really entails. You're going to be doing uh, kind of the elbow grease work. You're going to be doing the you're going to be doing the hard labor. You're going to be doing the stuff that maybe senior artists or you know even associate producers and stuff like that, art producers may not want to do. But you're going to learn the gig. You're going to learn it, and I think that's a very crucial part of this. However, past a certain point, and I think this goes for a portfolio as well, up front, put every piece of art that you're proud of. Put everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's concept art. Doesn't matter if it's an illustration, if it's graphic design. If you made it and it's a visual communication piece, whether it's a painting or a drawing or whatever, show it off. Just show it off. Just show people what you're about. Do the type of work that just you know makes you happy. Then I would say graduate on to trying to tailor a little bit of your style based on either artists that you really like or the job that you want. However, once you're there, there's going to be kind of a fork in the road. And personally, I think this is where I'm at right now. I've been very fortunate to work with Adidas and Warner Brothers and be featured by like Halo and DC Comics and work on Warhammer and just amazing stuff already. But you don't want to fall into the trap of impersonating yourself, which sounds weird. Some people find out what their shtick is and they do it, man. They do it and they are the person that does it. And if you need... um. If you need a specific type of thing, and that's the thing they do, they are a specialist. They are an assassin, man. They can nail it every time. A perfect example of this is Jacob Rosalski. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Um, He does very uh, beautiful work. It's very painterly. It's You've probably seen him stuff. He, he's done like Iron Harvest. He did uh, Scythe. I was going to say Scythe, but I don't know if that's... <laughs> I can never know how to pronounce that. But he does art where the format is very much the same each time. There's someone in the foreground looking into the background. There's something from the background facing the foreground. Uh, that's just his style and beautiful painting and the, the looks that he gets and stuff like that. And uh, It's really good. But that's what he does. That's it. So if you need that, Jacob should probably be on your short list of people to call because you're going to get great results. However, if I need concept art for a vehicle, I'm probably not going to call Jacob. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at my portfolio, lately it's a lot of three-fourths character work because I needed to work on characters. I was not great at it. I felt comfortable doing landscapes and, like, environments, but not people. So for the past year, I've just done nothing but people because I know I have to work on it. However, am I going to get hired for concept design on a vehicle? Probably not, uh, because I haven't done it. I haven't shown it. It's not on my portfolio. So an art director may look at my portfolio and say, hey, um, yeah, this kid's good, but I don't think he's the right fit for the job. Does that mean I'm quote unquote a bad artist because I didn't get picked to be the concept artist for vehicles? No. It means it's not what I do. So you have to find a balance. You have to find out what you enjoy making, but you also need to stretch. Maybe it would be good for me to do some vehicle stuff. Maybe I should do paintings of cars, like taking corners and stuff. Maybe it'll help with my edge control. And I don't know, like you don't want to do everything, but do everything kind of okay. You, you want to find the thing that you're great at and you really want to get better at it. But there, there's a YouTube video that I watched and it kind of opened my eyes up to kind of give me a sense of maybe I should just do the art that I like instead of the art that I think is going to sell. 
And the, the video, and I'll, I'll link to it in the description, it's called Dark Souls is the Ikea of Video Games. Which sounds really weird and some people might think that's flammatory or whatever, but it's not. The It's like a 45 minute business mentality GDC talk. I can't remember who did it, but he's an amazing speaker. And he talks about Ikea makes very specific furniture for a very specific market. It's not made of thick, you know, rich mahogany and passed down through generations. And, you know, you're not going to find this on sale like an Aaron's or, a you know, Ashley's furniture. Or like, it's not, that's not what it is. It's made for people that, uh, if I remember right, he said people with a lot of time and not a lot of money. So they have the time to just buy a box and put it together in that, but they don't have the money to spend on these crazy, you know, 400 pound dressers or whatever. And how Dark Souls is made that way. Dark Souls is for hardcore gamers. It is for people who want to brag that they beat a video game and that's part of their personality. And they really find the big achievement in learning boss patterns and something that's seemingly impossible, they're going to get better at it and they're gonna, you know, that's who it is made for. They do not care if the game is too hard for you. They don't care. Um, they just make it for the people they make it for. And I had one of those aha moments listening to this seminar because I was like, oh my god, who cares if I'm making Warhammer fan art? Who cares? I should make what I want to make. I need to do the thing that I like to look at because I can't be alone. I can't be the only person that likes weird orcs with white hair and bow and arrows in a cave. You know what I mean? Like, I think this comes down to taste. I think it comes down to targeting maybe the... Maybe not the job, but targeting the feeling. Targeting, like, the stuff that gets me excited is this. It's the type of fantasy art that, you know, that you want to know more about the character. You want to know more about the place. And where are they? And why are they there? And why is this bow and arrow glowing? And, you know, like, I, I like to introduce stuff like that so people will ask questions about, like, oh, what's going on here? Because that's always the stuff, like, when I look at Todd Lockwood. That's what I look at. I'm like, man, look at his Dritz, man. His Dritz and his Guinevere, they're they're battling a troll. And I've already read four books like this, but man, I want to read another one. Because look at that. That's amazing. And I don't even know what industry that would be. But maybe that's the point. Maybe instead of being so caught up in trying to get a job, just to get the job, try to get the job. What if I just make art that speaks to me and let the jobs follow? Let them come to me instead of me putting all of my effort into trying to impress a team or, you know, an art department or whatever that might have 700 applicants a day. I would much rather them reach out to me directly because they stumbled upon my stuff rather than me try to force feed a style into what they're looking for if that's not my thing that makes me excited. Because I, the more I do this, the more I can tell people that are phoning it in. And that's a big fear of mine. I never want to be the type that phones something in. I, I want to always be somewhat excited on something that I'm making. And that's the only way, like right now I have six live commissions, which is way too many. Don't take on six commissions at a time, kids. <laughs> Don't do it. Um, but you know, got to pay bills and maybe through this kind of gauntlet of work, I will come out the other end and be like, okay, I think I know what I want to do, but more importantly, I know what I don't want to do. And there's a few of those that are actually happening right now. And you know, I'm not going to, you know, it's not because they're a bad client or whatever. It's just that I'm learning what my thing is. And I think it has to be a natural progression. If it's something that you're really, really just dedicated and I need to get the job for Dungeons and Dragons. So what I'm going to do is do 500 full size, you know, highly rendered Dungeons and Dragons fan art pieces. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to 
you, you're going to get better. You can't help but get better. But who is it in service of? Who are you really trying to prove something to? Like, who who's going to be the victor at the end of this? Because if this is anything, you know, I used to work at a college and there, there was a big nursing program at the college. And your grades had to be top notch to get into the nursing program. But what people didn't realize is they would work their butt off just to get into this nursing program and then realize, oh, the hard work hasn't started yet. Now I have to go through nursing school. And that's a whole other thing. So you might think it's hard to get the job at Magic the Gathering. Wait until you get the job. I can only imagine how hard it is. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be mentally prepared. And if you're going to blow yourself out, if you're going to completely burn yourself out by trying to grind to get the gig, you're going to be so exhausted and bored of it by the time you would get the gig that you're not going to give it your all. And that may not be true. Uh, of course, I can't speak for everybody. But I know that's how I would be. If I did a, a goblin painting 400 times, I would hate painting goblins. Oh my god. That's why you can get people like Karl Kapinski, one of the best Games Workshop Warhammer artists I've ever seen. The last thing he wants to do now is more Death Skull Warhammer-y stuff. You can listen to him in interviews. He went through a phase where he did that for over a decade, all day, every day, and he's like, I don't want to draw another skull in my entire life. <laughs> you know? Even your favorite band. I'm sure they're bored of playing a few other hit songs, because they have to do it a billion times. So, you gotta keep yourself fresh. And I think if you're keeping yourself fresh, you're gonna find new things to like, you're gonna find new things to emphasize on, you're gonna find new artists to look at. And then that style is going to change. Now your goal may still be the same. You may still want to work on Magic the Gathering. But now you're coming at it from a different angle. Oh, well what if I did this? What if I did a super limited color palette? I would argue that might get you the gig sooner because you're showing them something they haven't seen before. If you're emulating everything that you see based on what you think an art director is going to like, you're already five steps behind. Because that stuff that's already published, that stuff that already went through the art direction for two years, I can, I can specifically tell you my art on Warhammer is about what well, might be over a year old now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it might actually be over a year old. <laughs> so it had to go through so much rigmarole about... You know what I mean? Like, they, it went through so many hands. So it was maybe, you know, up to par at the time, but a year out after it gets published... I know Magic the Gathering cards happen literally a year in advance. There are people working on cards right now for expansions and sets and all that stuff that have not been announced yet and will not even be announced for 10 months. They won't even release for 16 months, but they're making the art for it right now. So if you're looking at art that got the gig a year ago, that's art from three years ago. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's that weird dichotomy. There's a weird dissonance in trying to mimic the style that you see because it's old. Now, that's fine. I mean, you know, I think Rembrandt's still doing pretty good, right? <laughs> not, not, you know, art is one of those things that it can be timeless. If you have your fundamentals in place, you understand color, you understand kind of what the goal of your piece is, it can be timeless. So good art is good art is good art. That's just how it is. However, if you're following a trend, oh, I want to get on the next Dark Souls. Oh, I want to do paintings for the uh, riot. Who knows? I mean, Riot may have a new thing. I, I don't know this, of course, but they may have a new thing in the works that might be dark fantasy. It won't be big, bright splash art like you would see in League of Legends. So if you're trying to make League of Legends splash art in hopes to work for Riot, what if they're about to change course? What if they're about to change direction? Now, odds are pretty good they won't. It makes them way too much money and all that stuff. 
But hopefully you see the point of like, if you're constantly chasing, you're never going to keep up. You're never going to catch it. But if you start doing your own thing, if you really figure out what it is that you love, the jobs that need that will find you. You won't, You can write your own paycheck. You won't have to mimic or you won't have to do this in the style of. Now, it's cool for exercises. Like I said, this one, I, I really like Todd Lockwood's art. So I wanted a cool stoic fantasy piece that kind of reminded me of that, uh, but a little grittier, a little darker. So that's what I did. But I would argue this isn't super, like I wouldn't get hired for Pathfinder or Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay or, you know, some some darker, uh, like if there's a Grim Dawn expansion pack or so, you know, I don't think I would get hired based on this sketch. But if I do quite a few of these in this style, maybe it'll show a trend and then somebody who's making something like this might reach out. So I know we're kind of talking around in circles, but just know it is completely valid to tailor your portfolio for a specific job. Just know that job may not exist a year from now. That specific thing that you're going after might not exist. So now what? Are you working in a way that you still learned enough lessons to get better overall? Or were you so beelined in to trying to get the job at Blizzard that now, you know, uh, speaking of Blizzard, like Heroes of the Storm, I don't know what's happening with that game. I like that game, but like it's not being updated. I know a lot of people left. I know the StarCraft Esports team's gone. Like, if you were really banking for them to make another StarCraft II expansion, and you're making art just for StarCraft, I, I mean, go for it. If you love StarCraft, do it. If it speaks to you, do it. But expecting a job out of it, it's not gonna happen. Sorry. Uh, and that's coming from what was the biggest eSport on Earth like eight years ago. So, there, you never know. You never know. Just don't tie yourself down to just one idea. Now, go for an industry. Go for, hey, I like gothic fantasy art. Okay, great. Do that. Be valuable in that niche, and jobs will find you. You know what I mean? So hopefully, hopefully you got something out of this. Um, this is something I've been thinking about, you know, on as I'm sketching and doing all this stuff. It's like, okay, should I make my portfolio to get rehired by Warhammer? Or should I just get better at art and then hopefully Warhammer will hire me later anyway? You know what I mean? It's that given the take. So uh, there's no right answer. I think there might be a right answer for you. And you really have to sit down and ask yourself, what are you in this for? Are you in it for a specific credit? Do you want a certain IP on your name? Or do you just want to be the best artist you can be in the style that you love? Which I would argue would get you further. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Have you thought about this? Have you ping pong this idea around in your head before? Uh, let me know and let me know if you've had any revelations <laughs> about it. It's always fun to have the 2 a.m. aha moment. So let me know if you've had some of those lately. But yeah, I hope you dig this orc ranger thing. Um, yeah, I don't know if the anatomy's right, but uh, who cares? <laughs> anatomy, schmatomy, sh right? Ah, who needs it? People don't need to walk or do things. <laughs> those hips don't need to be there and those shoulders don't matter. Um, <laughs> so anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. I will talk to you all very soon. Go make some cool art and uh, take care. We'll see you next time.